Hey guys, what is going on? Today, I got some big news. As you can see in my other video, I said Dustin's going to share some big news with you. And as you can see, it's, it said book talk. Now, what could that mean? That can mean only one thing. I wrote a book. Well, I'm only 18 years old. That seems highly illogical. I, whatever. But today, guys, okay, first, let's do a little bit of a history lesson. You all know, or probably have heard, if you've been on this channel for a while, of the name Jameson. Jameson main character in a movie we were going to film well the only reason why we weren't able to film that movie is because I went somewhere else during a uh, winter break but Jameson wasn't made up for the movie it was a character I came up from uh, from a story I was writing and that story was gonna be based off or the movie was going to be based off the story. Well, guys. Well, guys, the time is here. My book is done. My book. My book. That says Dustin Moore. Why everything you know about Jameson is a lie. It is a book I wrote. Badass is what it is. Uh, hold on. There it is. My camera app closed for some reason. And I figured I want you guys to know the story of Jameson. I'm I'm really happy with how it turned out. I'm really happy with how it turned out, and and I figured I would. Man, that's kind of dark. That's what we're. I figured I would read the story to you because I want you guys to know who exactly Jameson is and why I like him so much. But, story, I will tell you a little bit about the book. The book had to be 16,000 words. Well, my story ended at 14,000 words. So, I had a friend combine, give me a story that he wasn't able, going to be able to finish. And we've been good friends for a while, so I figured, you know, I'd give him some recognition and we'll read his story first. It's called Into Madness. Short story by Alex Hunter. Good friend of mine. Here we go. We're gonna, his story is only like maybe 10 pages. So probably next video. We'll get into uh, the next episode. We'll get into uh, my story. It was getting colder in the freezer. She began hitting the door as hard as she could to get out. But with the padlock through the door's hasp, there was no hope of escape. Not even her screams made it out there. The manor's house's two owners... Mary and Todd. Mary and Todd found the maid's body in their freezer. Uh, the manor's house house's two owners, Mary and Todd, found the maid's body in their freezer with the door wide open and called the police. Officers were all over the area, investigating the scene of the death, but could come up with nothing. It was their child Lucius's birthday, but they were only at the party for a few quiet moments. Minutes. Lucius's parents own their own companies. His father owns an oil company, and his mother owns her own law firm, so they didn't have much time for their son. The boy was slowly spiraling into, into depression. Over the lack of time spent with his parents, he began to hallucinate his own friend, and that seemed to calm the boy's madness for a little while. The police were back 
with the report on what happened to the housemaid. They said that she was most likely went into shock. Being in that cold freezer wasn't good for her old heart. They asked a few questions and investigated the freezer again before they walked out the front door. The officers left the manor house without even a second thought as to what really could have happened to her. Burning heat and searing flames were all around him. He tried to scream, but his lungs were at that moment cauterized shut. The hard kitchen floor The hard kitchen floor is where his charred corpse lay. The smell of burnt flesh alerted no one at first, but it was only a few moments later when Todd I realized that his old business partner had gone missing. Todd went searching through the house, going door to door to find his friend. He opened the kitchen door only to see his friend's burnt corpse way right in front of him. The police were yet again at that beautiful manor house for an incident. The body was too damaged for the police to identify, but Todd i already told him. He was in a state of shock. For what he saw was something that had never passed through his mind. The smell was... <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. The smell was so bad that the house had to be vacant for a couple of days. So the family stayed in the hotel for the time being. When the family was out of the house, the relationship grew. And everything was calming down. And I got a text message. Oh, my bad. Uh, everything was calming down. The police stopped by the hotel to elaborate more into the incident with Todd's friend. They stated that the stove's gas line was compromised. And that this is what caused the fire that engulfed him. They told the family to check with their maintenance man and see how this could have happened. He was screaming and then fell silent, his voice crushed by the grand piano that was now laying on his head. It is just another casualty for the police to deal with, the voice echoed softly in the dark room. The childish blue eyes looked as if they were glowing in the dark room. It was the next morning before the body was found, and yet again the police were informed of the situation and showed up several hours later. The body was identified as Philip. Todd was shocked by the information. The maintenance man that the family had spoken to about, the incident that that had occurred only one week prior, was now dead. I don't understand why these things, these things keep happening to us, said Todd. This is just a turn of unfortunate events, and nothing more, said Mary. Death is shocking, but even more so when you know the person, approximately 154,600 people die every day, but those lives mean, those lives seem meaningless, to those who didn't even know them. Darkness is all that is around him. He is sane, but has no one to call his own. There is a light off in the distance, but all things come at the price. His sanity, his sanity is all what he has left to pay for the light. But he knew that would plunge him into the madness. Sound is now seen by him, and words now, and words now felt by him. This is what madness feels like. It is the reality that you, next page, that you don't see or feel. But this is very much so real. Let us know his side of the story, his side of madness. It was the morning of my tenth birthday. 
and I wanted to see if mother or father had bought an ice cream cake for my birthday. I gotta go let my cat out. Quick pause. BRB. Dang it, I accidentally ended the video, so we'll continue. Uh... I'll just start the paragraph over. It was the morning of my 10th birthday, and I wanted to see if mother or father had bought an ice cream cake for my birthday. I walked out of my room and began to travel toward the kitchen. My friend David had pointed out that the eyes on the wall were bleeding. It was odd, for I had never seen the eyes before that day. I had a bit of a scare when I walked into the kitchen, for what I saw in there was the beast with scales. My housemaid. Where is she, beast? I demanded. The beast turned to me with a mocking look into his eyes. It seemed to communicate with me as if it knew me from somewhere. There was no time for this idle chit chat, for I had more important matters to deal with. I pushed the beast into the wall into the walk-in freezer and sealed it by placing the brass padlock into the hasp of the door. I had returned several hours later, only to see my house made in the walk-in freezer. She was frozen to death, but the lock was still where I had left it. Thoughts raced through my mind, but I come up but I could come up with nothing on how this had happened. Hide the lock until the killer was found. That was the only idea that I could think of, but I had to make sure it was well hidden so that no one would ever find it in my possession. I hid it in my toy box that was inside my closet. It begged me for water, but it was made of fire, David told me that I should create fire to keep it alive. I couldn't bring myself to give it water, so I went to the janitor's closet to find a screwdriver. The only thing that I could think of was to loosen the gas line to the stove and then turn it on. That would keep the blazing entity alive and unharmed. Gas leaked into the room until it was finally caught. The blaze had engulfed the creature but I left behind the charred corpse of my father's friend who had been in the living room. I stood there thinking to myself for a moment. I had come to the conclusion that I needed to hide the screwdriver. I started to head toward the garden when David told me to hide it with the padlock in my room. It was a good idea. It was a good idea. One sec, I could have lost my spot. It was a good idea, but if anyone found the item, one of the items, they would find both. There was no time for mistakes. You now know how this boy's life has been changed by the madness. This is his story, and only, and it only gets better from here. Worlds shift and blend in the small boy's head. And all what he sees is true, and one reality or another. The only difference is what reality you are in. In the moment, we shall take a look at her past, and in the reason she is still here, look at it through the world's eyes. She screamed when the point of the blade pierced her tender flesh, but she was alone with him. There was a flash and then nothing about the silence. It is over, she thought to herself. We have probably about three more pages to go. Her past is a dark place, but she must return to reassure herself that she is very much alive. That she is very much so still alive. Very much so still alive. She had been put through a lot, and you could say that she is the way you see her today. She looked at her arms and began to cry. 
Her tears flowed from her face as blood for all the girl could do is remember the pain that was forced upon her those many years ago. I don't know if that makes sense. I don't know if that's edited good. That was forced upon her those many years ago. Anyways, we'll keep going. She stepped toward the man with his with death in her eyes. The same blade that had been used on her now was at the man's throat. And all he could do was sit there and wait for the inevitable to happen. He was trying to speak through the gurgling of the, the blood. She smiled when she looked at what she had done. The blue color of her eyes brightened a shade of a shade or two. Her eyes looked that of a child's. Ooh, that felt weird. Ow. Not of a child. It wasn't her fault. Look at it from her point of view. Hold on. Text message. Sorry, I'll pause the video. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, that of a child. It wasn't her fault. Look at it from her point of view. I mean, she couldn't just stand there and do nothing after the things, and he put her through. He beat her every day that he saw her, and she wasn't strong enough to do anything about it. Her life has had its difficult times, but the hard part of, of it is over now. She can only get stronger from this point. She stood there in the silence of the room, only to wonder what to do next. It wasn't long before the silence had completely engulfed her. Completely engulfed her. It wasn't long before the silence had completely... Oh my god. Thought out... I am failing. It wasn't long after the silence had completely engulfed her. Thought after thought went through her, mo her head, but nothing seemed right to her. She was waiting for that one idea that would put her... Where she is today, forever consumed by madness. We still got a little bit of story left. Madness comes to those that need it. But that need it. Madness comes to those that need it, or those that it seems as worthy. Madness chose her, and she accepted it like it was one of her friends. There was no struggle for the madness, was one with her, as she was one with the madness. Her life was the madness, and she knew that one day it would like it would find a new host for its twisted desires. Life would be lonely without the madness's love in her life. But she would think about her but she would think about that on a later date. Marcy, why have you helped me? Lucius asked. I know what you are going through. It isn't easy to deal with all the death and the madness that brings with it. So I thought I should help you, Marcy said. Well, I just wanted to thank you for all that what you have done for me. It is no problem for me, but how is David handling all of this? <coughs> <coughs> David isn't happy with me right now. I haven't made a mess in the house for a while now. Thank you so much. It really isn't a problem, Lucius. I just need you to remember that you should try to ignore David as much as possible. Then he will then begin to fade away and your life will re return to normal. I understand, but will mother and father ever find out what I did to those people? Next page. No, they will not be informed of your situation. Okay, thank you again, Marcy. I promise that I won't forget this. The problems for this pair are far from over. But we'll just have to sit back and watch what happens to them. Their lives are in danger as long as the madness is with that boy. The relationship that the madness has with the human is quite futile. 
if the human doesn't bond with the madness, it should be as if you were yourself, but with the embrace of the insanity. You should never have to fight for control of yourself. Improper relationships with the madness can leave you with constant pain and a feeling of constant struggle to keep hold of yourself. That is why you wait for the madness to show itself in your life and force it into you. Marcy was hired into the family's small circle of employees. Her job was to protect the boy at all costs. She was to stay by his side at all times but to make sure he was safe. There was no purpose for her there. It was like having her very own slave of sorts. Con comfort was one thing she brought to the boy without even trying. I awoke from my sleep screaming in agony. Pain was shooting through my body. But only one thing around me was the cool night air. I was soaked. And I felt all the exhausted for no reason. A hard contact with the blood chilling water had made me panic. It was freezing and all around me, but I couldn't move. She was fighting for me, pulling me to the surface. Once I was above the water, I started to cough up all the liquid in my lungs. The pain was so unimag unimaginable, and all I could do was just lay there and cough. Marcy carried me back to my room, and she gave me a set of dry clothing. I sat there thinking how I could have gotten out there. David turned to me and smiled, and at that moment, I was terrified. It was only a matter of time before the madness would try and find a way to escape uncooperative hosts. To free yourself of the madness is to complete to complete an unspoken contract with it, or you could kill just kill yourself. Kind of dark. The madness is really a simple creature. All it wants is death in one way or, or another. Simple wishes for something that is so that is so complex, is, or it really harder than it sounds. There was blood everywhere, but it couldn't be helped. The corpse was in pieces. And the wood chipper sat slick with the blood. There was a limited amount of people that could have been, that it could have been, but the police could not identify the body. This was definitely not an accident. Mary had the decision to move out of the manor house until the deaths had stopped. Todd, next page. Todd had refused to leave his home and would spend most of his time at the office away. The pieces were removed from the property shortly after the police showed up. Blood began to coagulate into a small, genatulous puddle in the yard. Lucius sat in his room, walking back and forth in the fetal position. On his bed, his expression emitted the embodiment of gloom. He had fallen back into the power of madness. She tried to help him all that she could, but he cannot find fight the temptation that the madness placed in his mind. The boy couldn't resist the power of the madness forever. No one could resist the power of madness. The mental res resistance of the boy thus far was quite impressive in the times before madness was needed. There was no peace on a massive level. That all ended when one man decided to break free from the others and commit the crime that we know as murder. I sat there rocking back and forth, thinking about what I had done. Thinking about what I have done. Uh, there was no excuse for this. I just pushed her over the edge and she didn't. Ever, she didn't even think that I could have done it. She trusted me, and I killed her. I, I, I just pushed her into the chipper. To see that image again and again is horrifying. It repeats over and over, and there's just no end to it. She had tried so hard to help me, and David told me she was lying to me. I, 
just couldn't stop thinking about the possibility that she was lying to me. And I think that is why I did it. Her eyes were so pure and innocent. And I just put an end to them. It was so easy, but that isn't how I wanted it to happen. I tossed my pocket watch into the wood chipper and asked her if she would retrieve it for me. She would have to have seen me toss it in there. But she said, yes, young master. And she climbed in. She climbed up the ladder on the side. When she got to the top and tossed my watch out, I flipped the switch. I pushed her in. What an odd turn of it. What an odd turn of events. Okay, well, guys, that was his story. Next episode, we will read my story. Once again, I read his story to give him recognition that this book wouldn't be possible without his story. And I don't think it enough words to put it in the format. So I wanted to point out that he, what he did for me. His story was really dark. If you didn't understand it, there is a lot of time jumps in the story. Let's see if I can try and show you. There's So if I'm talking about one thing and then I'm talking about another thing, it's because he has time jumps. Like, I don't know if I can show you, but these lines right here, you've probably read a book and seen time jumps. He has time jumps on almost every single page, and he jumps to different different parts of this uh, this kid's uh, story and I wasn't the full story I do want to read the ending because that is pretty good so this is actually a pretty long video which nothing wrong with that but next episode we will get into my book see you guys later